What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. And today, we are in the new 2020 Ford Expedition, courtesy of Bob Ruth Ford in Dillsburg, PA. And so, it is a beautiful snowy day today. We are expected to get three to five inches. So I figured it was a perfect day to review some four-wheel drive vehicles like the Expedition because this one is a great solid pick. If you have a family of perhaps three or more, you need those rear seats, but you still want cargo space behind those rear seats. Expedition is definitely where it's at. Of course, it's the competitor to the Chevy Suburban with a brand new redesigned Suburban coming out for the 2021 model year in 2020. So there will be some comparisons between the two in this video, including let's start with reliability. The Ford Expedition actually has an above average reliability rating according to consumer reports where the 2020 Chevy Suburban currently has an average reliability rating. And of course that could change with 2021, who knows? But what do you say, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there of course will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Expedition. First one being the XLT, starting at $52,810. Limited, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $63,345. King Ranch for $72,895. And Platinum starting at $73,935. And so there's a couple different configurations you can go with for the Expedition. That was all pricing for the standard Expedition there is an Expedition Max, and by the way, the standard Expedition is comparable to, let's say, the Chevy Tahoe, whereas the Expedition Max would be comparable to the Suburban. So if you wanted to go with the Expedition Max like the one we have today, I'll throw those prices on the screen right now. And if you wanted to add all-wheel drive to any of those configurations, because the standard setup is rear-wheel drive, simply add $3,120 to any of those prices. And so by the way, having said that though, with all the pricing, you could probably expect a pretty nice discount with the 2021 Suburban coming out. And I know the 2019 models right now are selling for approximately $15,000 off MSRP, which is ridiculous, but nonetheless. Powering this beast will be a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, putting out 375 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 470 pound-feet of torque available to around 2200 RPM. Power again sent to rear wheels or all wheels through a 10-speed automatic, giving you MPG numbers at approximately 17 in the city, 24 highway for the rear wheel drive, 17 city, 23 highway for the four-wheel drive. And by the way, that was the standard setup. If you go with the Expedition Max, it's 17 in city, 22 highway for the rear wheel drive, 16 city, 21 on the highway for the four-wheel drive setup that we have today. Day. And so before we do any kind of acceleration test in the Expedition Max, I did want to mention there are, of course, some driving modes available for this one. And to adjust those driving modes, there's actually a circular dial just behind the circular dial in front of it, which is how you select whether or not you're in drive, park, or reverse, or whatever the case. And so that's going to give you modes like tow, sport, low traction, and of course, you can do two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive if you wanted to as well. But ultimately, those driving modes are going to adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and of course, the steering sensitivity. But so now, of course, having mentioned all that, what do you say? Let's go ahead and do a uh, quick little acceleration test here. And here we go. Oh my goodness. Traction on point. Wow. Okay. This thing definitely has plenty of get up and go. Absolutely no issues with merging onto the highway. Even in these wet, slippery conditions, traction was 100% on point. There was no slipping whatsoever, which is really impressive, honestly, because these conditions are not the best today, but I still love reviewing cars in the snow. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find power assisted four wheel disc brakes. And just to put them to the test, Holy moly, wow, excellent braking feel, perfect. That is one thing I've always said with the Chevy Suburban, and I don't know if they're gonna fix it for the 2021 model year, but it's a very spongy braking feel. It's kind of delayed. You really have to press down that brake pedal pretty hard to get the thing to stop, but with the Expedition, perfect braking feel brings you to an immediate stop so i absolutely love that and it's definitely a positive when comparing it to the suburban but so then touching on suspension and handling a little bit up front you're going to get an independent front suspension with gas pressurized shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar in the back independent multi-link rear suspension same thing with gas pressurized shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar do want to mention there is an adaptive damping suspension for the king ranch and platinum and it's actually optional on 
the limited so you can get that if you want but that adaptive damping suspension is really something I typically recommend because it really does give you the best of both worlds not only gives you a smoother ride but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering again just really giving you the best of both worlds so that is definitely something that I would go for if I were to get the Expedition personally but having said that speaking of ride quality it's been absolutely perfect for me so far today so I wouldn't say it's quite as smooth as some of the smaller SUVs like the Kia Telluride or the Hyundai Santa Fe or something like that but still considering it is a larger SUV the ride quality is certainly just fine for what it is but punching on steering feel I actually quite like it a lot of times with SUVs you will find very loosey-goosey steering feels but it actually has a very nice weight to it in this one it's not too heavy of course nothing like a Mustang or anything like that but still it's a very nice weight to it so no issues there for me cabin noise is just fine I think it's starting to hail now so it's gonna be a heck of a fun time getting some exterior shots of this thing but besides that hail or sleet or whatever it is coming at the windshield cabin noise is just fine as it intensifies even more anyways touching on visibility I actually can see fairly well considering this is such a large SUV and I did want to mention something those third row headrests as large and in charge as they are they can fold down if you didn't have any passengers in that third row that's certainly going to assist with visibility with the fact you can actually fold down those headrests so you don't have to worry about that hindering your visibility. Then would also mention in addition to that windshield wiper to icer comes standard across the board for all trim levels that is definitely going to be a plus on days like today and also rain sensing windshield wipers coming standard with the limited trim level and up and they are absolutely amazing that's something that's a feature I absolutely love more and more vehicles are starting to get them these days so it's days like today where the windshield starts to get a little bit wet they're going to automatically turn on for you when it feels it's necessary so really it's just one last thing you're going to have to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on actually driving and keeping your rear passenger safe because of that so that's definitely a plus but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this large and in charge 2020 ford expedition all right so here it is you guys on this beautiful snowy day here in pennsylvania the 2020 ford expedition and so let's go ahead and start up front here front grille is actually going to differ slightly among the trim levels for example the xlt and limited will be the same style front grille king ranch and platinum will also be the same style and the king ranch is actually going to give you some tan accents up front as well did want to also mention there's some additional body colored trim near the lower portion of the front bumper if you were to go with the platinum although i will say this looks plenty good up front here in this magnetic metallic exterior of the limited that we have here today did want to also mention once again four by four trims or four-wheel drive trims are also going to give you front tow hooks you guys can see those black tow hooks integrated into the front bumper and that's only if you go with the four-wheel drive rear-wheel drive configuration you will not get them of course but now let me get to the best part of this particular expedition that we have today halogen projector headlights come with the xlt and limited Limited trim levels they of course coming with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out they're going to turn on automatically for you there led daytime running lights also coming standard and they are the lighting around the perimeter of the headlights up there halogen fog lights down below coming with all trim levels and i did want to mention the perimeter styling of those fog lights that will be black if you go with the XLT, but all other trims are gonna give you that chrome perimeter that you are currently looking at right now. LED headlights coming with the King Ranch and Platinum trim levels. However, they are optional on the limited and that is what you are looking at right now that option you can get them individually for an additional 740 dollars that's the least expensive way if you only wanted those led headlights but there is also a package deal that of course will include them as well but it's around 50 some hundred dollars a little over five thousand dollars for that but led fog lights coming standard with that led lighting package as well by the way led lighting is not available on the xlt in case you were thinking you wanted to go that route but let's go ahead and make our way to the side as i free my butt off today here black roof rails coming standard for the xlt silver roof rails coming standard with the limited trim level and up that of course is what you're looking at right now there rear privacy glass coming standard for all trim levels chrome belt line molding same thing for all trim levels across the board 
body colored power adjustable side mirrors with integrated turn signals that will be heated as well. That's the standard setup. That's definitely a very nice setup there. Satin aluminum mirror caps coming with the platinum. You will get stone gray mirror caps with the King Ranch. It's kind of their theme there. Black running boards will come with the XLT. One of the coolest things, it took me a second to get used to because I get out of vehicles so quickly, I think, but power deployable running boards coming standard with the limited King Ranch and Platinum, meaning the second you open the door, they're gonna fold down for you and then tuck back up out of the way when the door is closed. It's a pretty cool little setup, I kinda like it. But anyways, let's make our way to the wheels. 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels coming standard with the XLT. 20 inch aluminum alloys with the limited and there are 22 inch aluminum alloys for the king ranch and platinum of course there's plenty of optional wheel setups for all trim levels so I do want to mention that as well but so now making your way to the back rear spoiler with an integrated brake light will come standard across the board rear window wiper coming standard just below that of course expedition lettering spelled out horizontally in chrome that is what you are looking at right now of course led taillights once again coming standard across the board very nice there well done Ford trim level badging of course found in the lower left hand corner there you guys can see the word limited down there of course single exhaust outlet down below it's kind of a large exhaust outlet too but it is kind of tucked away but nonetheless I think you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, there of course are a few different ways. There actually is a button in the back, so that's always probably your easiest way. There is a button on the key fob as well. That is yet another way to go about opening it. And by the way, there is a hands-free foot activated power lift gate if you were to go with the limited trim level and up. So that's always convenient, especially if you have your hands full of kids or groceries or whatever the case. So that's definitely a plus for the limited trim level and up. But once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 19.3 cubic feet for the standard setup, not the one you're looking at right now. For the max, it comes in at 36 cubic feet. So that is how much space is behind that third row. And for comparison's sake, the 2021 Suburban is said to come in at 41.1 cubic feet. So slightly more, but really once you get in this category of SUV, I'm not sure that slight number is really gonna make all that much of a difference, quite honestly. But nonetheless, it is a little bit more. But behind that second row with a third row folded for the standard setup, for the standard Expedition, it comes in at 57.5 cubic feet from the max that you're looking at right now 73.3 cubic feet and with all rows folded behind that first row enough to sleep in or live in even honestly 104.6 cubic feet behind that first row for the standard setup 121.5 cubic feet behind that first row for the max, the Expedition Max. For comparison's sake, my Hyundai Santa Fe is 80 cubic feet. I know the Kia Telluride is 87 cubic feet, and this Ford Expedition Max is 121.5, so a very substantial difference between a lot of the other three row SUVs out there. And again, for comparison's sake, 2021 Suburban, 144.7, which actually is a pretty good difference actually between the Expedition Max and the Suburban, but Nonetheless, let's continue on here. In-floor storage can be found back there. There is a rear cargo light, 12 volt power outlet. You got some grocery hooks, but really 121.5 cubic feet behind that first row is absolutely ridiculous. But let's make our way now to the rear legroom. Third row legroom comes in at 36.1 inches. That is brilliant for an SUV and brilliant for a third row specifically. For instance, I made even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there, plenty of space back there. There's actually USB charging ports for the third row passengers. So if you had kids playing on their tablets back there on a long road trip, they can actually charge up their own tablets back there because there's USB charging ports back there. That's once again, very brilliant. And by the way, there are three seats in that third row. A lot of three row SUVs will come with two seats in the third row. So I didn't want to mention that as well. Make your way to the second row that is going to come in at 41.5 inches. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall, plenty of space for me back there. Once again, USB charging ports for those second row passengers. And I did want to mention, this is one of the big things. A lot of people will like one setup or another, the standard bench seating for three people in that second row 
is going to come standard with the XLT and limited trims. However, if you wanted captain's chair, simply go with the King Ranch or Platinum, or if you wanted it on the limited, you can do that for only an additional $595, which really isn't all that bad. So that is probably what I would go with because if you did have kids using that third row, it's a lot easier to just have them jump in the side, run up the center there to the third row, than having put down the second row. Although putting down the second row isn't all that bad, honestly. It's just an adult more than likely is going to have to do it as opposed to a kid, but nonetheless. Rear ventilation, of course, coming standard for every expedition that's going to be found on the roof of this one. So all three rows can stay perfectly comfortable. And this particular expedition has some options with it, of course. Did want to mention them. There are heated rear seats on this particular setup. Then there's some cup holders that actually come standard either way, but kind of found in between the driver and passenger seats, but more geared towards the rear passengers. So they have some cup holders there too. So also in addition to those USB charging ports, I also wanted to mention this, there is a 150 watt power outlet as well. So perhaps girls, you could charge up your hair straightener or whatever in that second row or guys, you can charge your tools. Now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats, cloth surfaces coming with the XLT, leather surfaces coming with the limited turn level and up. XLT also gives you an eight way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar. Limited trim level adds to that 10 way power driver's seat and 10 way power adjustable passenger seats. And they will be heated and ventilated front seats if you go with the limited trim level and up as well. Platinum is actually gonna give you massaging front seats. So that's crazy, right? But overall, the seats aren't bad. Not quite as comfortable as a Lexus, of course, but certainly not uncomfortable. They're pretty much as expected for, for what this vehicle is. But let's now go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and is leather wrapped for all trim levels and it will be heated on the limited trim level and up so of course we do have that heated steering wheel and that button is located just beside the climate control options there in the front but so anyways now let's make our way to the startup on this one let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your ford logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and that times two button there that is your remote start and that is going to come with the limited trim level and up. It is keyless entry with remote start. That's pretty cool. But all trim levels actually are going to give you a push button start. So all I'm going to do here, simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button. It is located just by the driver's right knee there. And so, but once started up, tachometer is all the way on your left, speedometer is all the way on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center and to control what is on that digital display, simply use the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel there. That's gonna give you a ton of different things. There of course is a digital speedometer if you wanted to go that route. There's your engine temp, trip A, trip B, there's some towing information if you wanted to do that. There's also some off-road status, just like the Ford Raptor. I found that pretty cool as well. And of course you can adjust your safety settings up there as well but i'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the digital speedometer i think that's pretty cool but make your way to overall interior quality panoramic moonroof coming standard with the king ranch and platinum but that is actually going to be optional on the limited and the xlt as well so you can get a panoramic moonroof for any trim level really if you wanted it like you're looking at right now of course overhead sunglass holder will come standard on all trims with the little school bus mirror as well so you can spy on your rear passengers and yell at the kids when they are acting up so that's kind of cool i guess universal garage door openers coming standard for every single trim level i think that's absolutely wonderful usually you have to go with the top trim level to get some of those and they are located on the driver's side sun visor here for up to three different garage doors so you don't have any rattling garage door openers that's always a good thing tri-zone climate control with the limited trim level and up as well as wood green interior trim love that found around the shifter the circular shifter here just around the drive modes a lot of times with a lot of other vehicles including my mustang that'll be plastic but i like the wood grain interior trim that's pretty cool ambient lighting coming standard with the limited trim level and up and it is in ice blue color you cannot adjust the colors unfortunately like you can in a mustang but still pretty cool that that's there wireless phone charger once again with the limited trim level and up that's located just in front of the shifter and cup holders there and a cool little feature actually about the expedition you have dual passenger side glove boxes you have your standard glove box of course which has two compartments by the way there's a little compartment up top there and there's also your bottom compartment but then there is an additional glove box just above 
above that for even more storage. I found that pretty cool. And overall, the finishes are definitely quite nice. There's a lot of stitched leather up top here above the glove boxes. There's a rubberized kind of cargo area just above the infotainment screen, and I'll get more into that later, but rubberized cargo area, meaning if you do go off-road in this thing, it kind of prevents things from sliding around there. That's always nice. Again, along with that wireless phone charger, you have USB charging port as well as a regular phone charger, dual cup holders with some ambient lighting surrounding that at the bottom. And then of course, within that center armrest, you have a absolute massive area to store just about anything. You could store a cat or a small dog in there, quite honestly, it's that large. You have dual pen holders at the top part as well. And 12 volt power outlet can be found in there, but really that is an absolute massive storage area. And there's also a sliding tray that can store change. It actually has cutouts for quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies, and rubberized bottom once again. So definitely a massive area to store stuff in. But let's go ahead now and make our way to the tech display on this one. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard on all trim levels, AKA Ford Sync 3 system. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard with that, as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you simply have a smartphone, you have free navigation displayed up on that display screen. So that's always a plus, especially considering this more than likely will be a road trip vehicle for many people. Factory navigation system coming standard with a limited trim level and up, although you really don't need it these days, again, with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's kind of nice that it's there though. Climate control settings you can adjust up there as well, of course, along with your radio information. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, six speakers will come with the XLT. However, if you go with the limited trim level and up, you will get a 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system. And that, of course, is the one we have today since we have the limited. So what do you say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Not sure what language that was, but crazy amounts of bass in this thing, really for the limited trim level. Bang & Olufsen is a very well-known company. So the fact that it's in the limited trim is absolutely brilliant. Love the sound system. Last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the tech display though is when you of course do put the Expedition in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels across the board. In addition to that, King Ranch and Platinum trims are gonna give you a 360 degree monitor and it is optional for the limited. And that of course is what you're looking at right now. We do have that option there today, but that of course is going to lead us into safety. And so let me first start by mentioning for the 2020 Expedition, this particular vehicle has been ranked number one in safety by US News for safety in the category at least of large SUVs. And so large SUVs including the Suburban, Tahoe, Armada, GMC Yukon, and the Toyota Sequoia, the Expedition has been ranked the safest out of all of them. So if you do have a family, this is definitely one to consider for that reason alone. It is the safest large SUV in this category. So that's always a plus to start with. Front side, side curtain airbags will come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there, of course, tire pressure monitoring system comes standard, but all trim levels for the Expedition will also come standard with a plethora of advanced safety features, including a reverse sensing system, meaning when you put the car in reverse and you get too close to an object, person, or another vehicle, it will start to beep at you so you know that you are about to hit something and then you can stop. That's always a plus for as large of an SUV as this is. Also pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking, so if you're not paying attention, the vehicle will actually stop for you. So you don't go ahead and hit the vehicle in front of you at low speed. So that's always a good thing. Automatic high beams coming standard, auto dimming rear view mirror also coming standard. Did want to also mention though, the limited trim level and up is going to add to that a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, which is a huge plus in the size of an SUV. Also a forward sensing system. So if you're pulling into a parking spot, maybe with a sign in front of it, so you don't want to go too far and hit that. Again, it's gonna beep at you so you don't go hitting anything. King Ranch trim level then and up is going to add an adaptive cruise control system with stop and go and lane keep assist and lane keep alert. 
And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Quick final thoughts for you guys. This thing has been absolutely brilliant in the snow. We probably have a few inches right now, but it's been absolutely trekking right through it. So no issues with if this thing is actually gonna get through the snow or not. So put your mind at ease there. Also the fact that it is rated the best safety rating and has above average reliability. And there are some crazy discounts right now to be had on this definitely a very solid pick and one personally that I would consider if I have three or more kids honestly so having said all that that is about it for this one feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>